Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast today. Motivational speaker and founder of the Up Woman Network, Dolores Presley, joins me this morning to share how each of us can be bold and courageous in our lives. And later on, Dancing Wheels Company president and founding artistic director Mary Verdi Fletcher and percussionist Alex Simon will tell us about a unique production taking place in late April here in Cleveland. And also on the program today, vascular neurologist Dr. Sishan Kawaja and stroke survivor Ernest Williams will tell us about the annual luncheon hosted by the American Heart Association commemorating Stroke Month. I'm Leon Bibb. Good to have you aboard today. Always good to have you with us. And right now, one of our regulars around here, Dolores Presley, motivational speaker and founder of the Up Woman Network. Good to see you, Dolores. It's always great to see you, Leon. Oh, you've always got some. You always make me feel so fine and so wonderful because, well, you're a motivational speaker. Uh, that is what I do. Yes, yes. What, what, what's it take to be a motivational speaker like you? Well, first of all, in just anything that you do, just believe in yourself. That's critical. That's critical. So me, I started off as an elementary school teacher. Mm -hmm. and that's where my background is. Yeah. Then I started doing modeling for plus size girls. And as I was talking and going around the country, someone pulled my coattail and said, girl, do you know you can be paid professionally? I'm like, be paid for something that I love to do that I got paddlings in school for talking too much? <laughs> So that is it. So really just decide what it is that you want to do. Yeah, so you, 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 you're all over the country talking to, to various kinds of groups. What is it that you try to tell them? What do you try to get them to do? Well, I teach people to be bold, confident, and courageous. And I say, know yourself and be yourself. Leon, everyone else is taken, so you might as well be yourself. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. That's so important. And people sometimes don't know who they really are. Because if I say something to someone and say, who are you? They'll start telling me I'm a news anchor, I'm a teacher, I'm a keynote speaker. That is not who you are. That's what you do, but that's not who you are. So I want people to know who they are. Are they loving? Are they caring? Mm -hmm. Who are you really? So who once you? you know and be yourself, you're starting off to being courageous and bold. That's one of your mantras is that word bold, B-O-L-D. Bold, yeah. bold, confident, and courageous. I think people, it's important to be competent, but if you don't have confidence with your competence, then you're not going to go as far. And many people don't really feel confident. I work with some women in corporates, what's called the imposter syndrome. Imposter mm -hmm. syndrome is when you don't really believe that you're worthy of what you're doing. Doing. I know there are women who are vice presidents, and if people really knew they're inside, they're not confident. They think they don't deserve it. So I teach people that you do deserve it. Well, I'm going to tell you, I try to be bold in what I do for a living. This is what I decided I wanted to do when I was in the sixth grade really, really at are? Miles Standish Elementary School in Cleveland. 12 years old, 11 years old, I said, I want to go into the news business. And you must go into it with, with both feet, is what somebody told me. So that's what I decided to do. It's important. Maybe. Know your worth is another thing. Know your worth. No opinion is more vital to you than the opinion of yourself. What about changes in personality once an individual feels or he, he or she is embracing that boldness? What happens when you embrace boldness? We teach people how to treat us. So people treat you the way you treat yourself. So if you're bold and you're confident, then people will treat you that way. Now, if you are walking around meek and not believing in yourself, then people are going to do the exact same thing to you. They're not going to treat you with respect. They're, they're just not going so to So you got to be bold in everything you do. I think you do. I think there's a difference between bold and arrogance now. But being bold and believing in yourself and knowing who you are. I want people to get a bowl. I, this is just a bowl of water and fill it up and then have a tray underneath it. And I want you to get a marble and drop a marble in this bowl every single time you, that you could think of something that's good, that you do good, that you're great. And as you see the boldness, when you drop in that, that um, 
marble, mm -hmm. then the water is going to start pouring out. And all that negativity, we're going to say water represents the negativity, yeah. it'll just go over. So really look at your past. Look at what you've been doing. And that will help you even be more confident. That's what you tell these groups when you get together. You've got the Up Woman organization, which you found to tell us about some events that are taking place with Up Woman. Yes, Up Woman stands for Undeniably Powerful Woman. So I want you to believe in your power and believe in yourself. I have a, a program coming up called Cookies, Coffee, and Connections. And they can contact our office. It's all about connecting. And then I'm doing this really big national thing called Stand Up. I stood up and still standing. So when you're bold, I remember I stood up against Donald Trump. People were so afraid for me. My mother, God rest her soul, but she was like, Dolores, Donald's going to have you killed. You cannot stand up against <laughs> Donald Trump. And you went up against Donald Trump. I did. With all his billions of dollars. I did, and I won. And you won. <laughs> Trump doesn't talk about that, though. <laughs> no, no, but no, was I nervous? Yes. Yeah. And I, so we, we all have fear, but I think fear stands for false evidence appearing real. Uh -huh. We all have fears, but do it. There's a quote that says, fill the fear and do it anyway. People can get in touch with you by going to your website, right? They can. And it's called DoloresPresley.com, and we've got that at the bottom of the screen. And that Presley is spelled with a double S, D-E-L-O-R-E-S, Presley, P-R-E-S-S-L-E-Y.com. DoloresPresley.com. And you're available to come speak to organizations. I am. I speak for churches. I speak for corporates, women's organizations. I speak mm -hmm. for anyone who will have me. I told you I got paddlings in school for it, so now I'm so happy that I made something out of that. Well, I hope they're not paddling <laughs> still in school. I don't oh, no. think I they don't will think be <laughs> They will be removed. <laughs> They'll be removed. But that was a long time ago. Well, not that long ago. Well, good to have you on the broadcast, Dolores Presley, motivational speaker and founder of the Up Woman Network, and she's going to be all around. You give her a call. Uh, you can contact her by going to her website, Dolores Presley. You see that at the bottom of the screen dot com for more information on everything she's all about. She is a bold woman. Thank you, Leah. Good to see you, Dolores. Quite. Good to, always good to have you on the board. She makes me feel wonderful when I'm on the broadcast. I feel bold and strong. Strong enough to tell you that a one of a kind production comes to Cleveland. We'll hear about that in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope. We are going to make music in this segment. I promise you. Dancing Wheels Company and School is partnering with percussionist Alex Simon of the off-Broadway show Stomp for a unique production here in Cleveland. President and founding artistic director Mary Verdi Fletcher is here with Alec to tell us more about this April the 25th event. Dancing Wheels, president and founding artistic director Mary Verdi Fletcher, one of the regulars on our broadcast. Hello. Hey, Mary. <laughs> How are you? Oh, good to see you, Mary. Good to see you, Good too. to see you. Dancing Wheels, you've got sit-down dancers in wheelchairs and like you up and stand-up yep. dancers as Absolutely. we call them. Absolutely. You've been doing 15 this 15 of us. <laughs> you've been doing this for some years now. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, 34 years. You have found an artistry in dance even though some of the dancers like yourself are confined to wheelchairs. Well, we look at the wheelchairs as a vehicle for freedom and for artistry as well. Mm -hmm. So there's opportunities for performance that you can't uh, see in a quote-unquote uh, typical dance company. Speaking of performance, you have made a link here with Alex Simon, one of the percussionists in the off-Broadway production of Stomp. Hey, Alec, good How to you have doing? you with us. Good morning. From Canton, Ohio, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you and you and Mary, Mary Verdi Fletcher got, 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 got a, little, a little show going on. Yes, we're doing it. It's well, going to be amazing. And we're, now, tell us about what, what happens in, in your part of the show. Well, my part of the show is this. Me and Miss Mary, we had a dream about, you know, combining live music with dance, with dancing wheels. And, you know, me being a percussionist, I'm like, well, you know, we can play on the wheelchairs. We can do this. We can do that. So I came in. And we just directed this show together, and we built magic. It's like the, it's like dancers come to life with live percussion, and percussionists come to life with dancers. So that's pretty much what it is. I look mean in that picture, but I'm just thinking on that. Yeah, this picture you're talking about, we're going to try and get a shot of this because it, right, gives, right. it gives the audience a really a look. If we can get a shot of this on camera three, I'd appreciate yes, it. Yes, man. It's a shot of some of the things that you do, and in the middle there, right there in the middle, you're actually making music with a broomstick. With a broom, with with Stump, uh, Luke Cresswell. And Steve McNicholas, the pro, uh, creators of the show Stomp, they seen something in me. I auditioned against about 1,200 people in New York City, and they said, we're taking eight, and I was one of the eight, and did the show 10 years, and I fill in occasionally, and now 
I give back by doing bullying assemblies and yeah. teaching penitentiaries and working with Dancing Wheels. And one of the things he does, he plays a hits on the floor. He brings in, uh, he, he hits on a drum head. Oh, yeah. or, or he'll hit on a garbage can or top, a bucket, whatever. anything. And actually, we're going to uh, have an opportunity to do some of the percussion work, too. You're going to have, you, so not, not only is Mary Verity Fletcher <laughs> dancing, now she's playing, she's, she's, playing. Playing. she's hitting the drum head. <laughs> She's playing. Well, where, where's this going to be? Uh, Rhythm and Wheels, it's called. Rhythm yeah, and Wheels around, around the, world, the world. And I've got a little placard. We'll yeah. get a shot of this. It's going to be well. at the Masonic mm -hmm. Performing Arts Center, which is at 36th and Euclid. We're neighbors down yeah. here. Right down the street. In on the Euclid big Avenue auditorium. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. it, it's a. Uh, Oh, and that's going to be at 8 o'clock at the Masonic Auditorium on Saturday, April the 25th. Yes, yeah. the performance is at 8, and if people want to come to the VIP event, that starts at 6.30. What's the, what's the message that, uh, that, that you want to leave people with as they, uh, as they come and view this? Well, for Dancing Wheels, we um, want to break all boundaries and look at the possibilities. And for this, artistically, it really has risen to a new level of artistry, um, live music um, and dance together in such a, it's, it's almost like a spiritual coming together. Right. And we perform African music and Latin music together and some hip hop. And so it, it's a melding of all the talents. You brought your sticks with you. You brought yeah, your you brought your I, drumsticks. I always with you. go everywhere on my sticks. Always, and, and and you can make music out of anything and anywhere. Anything. Well, you're you're here right yeah, at the like, anchor desk. Okay, you got this table. You got her chair. Yeah. You got this. So oh, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much if you can, you can you can do this on the on the side of a building on a windowsill or wherever. You have your own rhythm within you. I tell kids every day when they back in the slave days they didn't have no music they didn't have no instruments so we used our hands you know right. body percussion uh -huh. anything you know so you always have music around you that paper that pen mm -hmm. that tie you have on is, is music you just have to find a way to get the, the, the sound rhythm, out of it. The rhythm, the rhythm that is in you. The rhythm, brother. That's a it. And that's what you do with the dancing wheels. Yes. There is a rhythm in what you do, even you and the other sit-down dancers and the stand-up dancers dancing yes. together. Yes. Yeah, and the rhythm is here. It's in your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you if you listen to your heart, mm -hmm. you, can, you can find this rhythm. How can people get tickets to this event, which is going to be Saturday, April the 25th at the Masonic Auditorium, East 36th Street and Euclid Avenue? How can people get tickets? Uh, they can call to 416-432-0306 or on our website, dancingwheels.org. And, 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 and how much are tickets, Mary Verity? Um, well, there's a range. Mm -hmm. uh, general tickets are $30 to see the performance. Yeah. And for the VIP, it's $100. But that's a whole evening of partying. And that, <laughs> <laughs> partying with Mary Verity Fletcher and Alex Simon. Oh, it, 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 doesn't get get any, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> better. The show's going to be amazing. Yeah. Like I said, Cleveland is Miss, Miss Mary is bringing Cleveland to a whole nother to a whole nother world as far as you know dance and everything and mm -hmm. and even like um, May 3rd at the at the Tolerance Fair yeah. at the Wolstein Center I have to be a part of that and the lady Miss Lisa Bachman I met her through her through Miss Mary so I'm here uh, in Cleveland a lot doing yeah. music and percussion but she is like my my main bullseye for Cleveland. I'm, I'm going to let you play us out, and oh. I'm and I'm going to put my microphone over there. If we can do this now, if okay. we can do this quickly, okay. I'm going to put my mic because I want to pick up your sound. Okay. I want to pick up your sound, and the control room is probably going crazy with me. Uh. <laughs> Kaleidoscope. Glad to have you with us today. You know, the month of May is Stroke Month, and here in Cleveland, the American Heart Association will host its annual luncheon. Vascular neurologist Dr. Sishan Kawaja of the Cleveland Clinic and stroke survivor Ernest Williams are both here to talk about the event and about Ernest suffering a stroke at the age of 26 and recovering from that. 
Glad to have you with us in more ways than one. Thank you for having us. We're us. going to get to get to get to you in just a second. But okay. let's begin with Dr. Zishan uh, Kawaja, who's a vascular neurologist with Cleveland Clinic, and uh, here talking about stroke and those kinds of things. And I know you're kind of representing the American Heart Association because there's a tie, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. You know, stroke is a medical emergency. It's uh, the fifth leading killer in the United States and the number one cause of long-term disability. So it's very important to get stroke awareness out there. What happens when a person has a stroke? Well, basically, there's an interruption of blood flow to the brain. It can be because of a clot or it can be because of a ruptured blood vessel that causes bleeding in and around the brain. Uh -huh. What causes that? Well, there's a lot of risk factors for stroke. Uh, there's you know, hypertension, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, uh, sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, in women, there's some unique risk factors such as migraines, pregnancy, oral contraceptive use, and even hormone replacement therapy. And you can be young and have a stroke. Absolutely. Because the man you bring with you today is 26 yes. year old, was 26 at the time you yes. had a stroke. Ernest Williams, tell me about that now. Um, when was that, by the way? It was actually the day before my birthday. Um, I was in my apartment for two days. I didn't know I was having a stroke. I thought I just had a sinus headache. Um, until on my birthday, my mom had called me to tell me happy birthday. And I said, you know, mom, I have a bad headache. I'll call you back, <laughs> not knowing it was my birthday. Yeah. Um, she called me back about four hours later. I told her I still have a headache. I'll you know, talk to you later. She said, you know, they want me to come and get you. Because at that time, I was living in Akron. Um, so it would have been a little time for her to come pick me up. And I was like, you know, I'm fine. I'll call you back. Five minutes later, I said, come and get me. Um, you were having a stroke, and this yes. was in the year 2011, right? Yes, A few yes. years ago. Yes. And how are you doing now? I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. Doing great. Doing that, was, that was four years ago. You, you're, uh, you're 30 years old now. And 29. doing okay. 29. 29. And do, we're not pushing you. <laughs> okay. right, I'm 29. Okay. Okay. Holding on at 29. But you're yeah. doing well. I'm doing great. Yeah. How do, you, how, do, how do you react to this when you hear his story? You know, I mean, stroke is a medical emergency. We really want people to recognize, uh, you know, the warning signs. So we like to tell people to think fast. Mm -hmm. You know, so F stands for face. Stroke can cause weakness or numbness in the face. Sometimes you'll see a droopy mouth, maybe some drooling coming out. A stands for arm, so you can have weakness or numbness in your arm or leg, mostly on one side. S stands for speech. You can have some slurring of the speech, difficulty getting your words out or even understanding. And T really means time to call 911 because, again, it is a medical emergency. Yeah. I know you're having a big luncheon where we're going to talk about these kinds of things and raise some money for the American Heart Association as it, as it tries to get the word out on stroke. And that's going to be on Saturday, uh, May the 2nd, at the Embassy Suites on Rockside Road, Rockside Woods Road in, in the community of Independence. Uh, Saturday, May 2nd, it's a luncheon starts around the 11 30 noon hour what do you want people to you want people to, to buy tickets to this don't you absolutely it's very definitely. important yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, if, and if they can they can go to heart.org slash cleveland heart.org slash cleveland and you can get more information or you can telephone 216-619-5156 i got those numbers on the television screen you you are have you changed your life any as a result of what happened to you when you had a stroke at the year, age of 26 uh, four years ago? Yes, I changed my diet, um, exercised more, um, and just, I did different, um, there's a website called Luminosity, uh -huh. I did different brain games to get my brain back to, back to where I was before I had the stroke. Yes. So yeah. it helped me to get you back to, um, to make your brain to want to wanna use it more because when you have the stroke, um, you basically lose the sales, so you have to get your skills back again. And you're working, and you use your brain every day. Of course, you use We all use our brains every day. <laughs> yes. and people are walking around. You're working as an electrical engineer at NASA, NASA yes. Glenn. Yes. And everything's okay. Everything's great. Your 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 health is is doing okay. Yes, I am. There is success then. So if we catch this early. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Is um, that key? Is that key? Yeah. Time is brain. You know, you lose about two million neurons a minute. So the earlier that we can get to you, um, then the faster. You know, the better the chance of having a more complete recovery. He talked about his diet, and he talked about he does not smoke and mm -hmm. he talked about things like that what's your recommendations for those of us who are trying to hold off having a stroke we don't want to get there in the first place I think primary prevention is huge and I think he's doing the you know the, the exact right thing I mean you have to watch what you eat you have to get regular exercise uh, really it's maintaining a very healthy lifestyle and if you have any one of the risk factors like high blood pressure high cholesterol or even diabetes or if you smoke it's important to follow up with your doctor to get those things screened what about Check your family regularly. your family history if oh, somebody family history. if your parents had something absolutely i mean uh, there are some genetic components to stroke 
Um, and if that applies to you, then it's even more important to follow up with your doctor to make sure all of your modifiable risk factors are addressed. Let's give it a good plug. Once again, it's going to be Saturday, May 2nd. This is, this is the American Heart Association's uh, luncheon to raise money for, for, for education about, about, about stroke. And Dr. Edgar Jackson, my good friend, medical doctor Ed, Edgar Jackson, is going to be honored at that, this event. We'll yes. give him a good plug, too. One of, the, one of the best guys I know in Cleveland. And uh, Kim Coles is going to be there as well as, yes. as, as part of the She's one of the actresses on, on, on in, in television television yes. show. Uh, Saturday, May second, it's going to be at the Embassy Suites on Rockside Ro Rockside Woods Boulevard in Independence. And where can we get? And we got. I know where we can get tickets. What are the ticket costs? Do you know? Thirty-five dollars. Thirty-five bucks. Yes. Not bad at all. It's a good it, and goes for a good cause. Yes, definitely. Saturday, May the second, Embassy Suites on Rockside Woods in Independence. Yes. Thank you so much for being on the broadcast. No problem. And good luck to you. Thank you so much. Much. Glad you're still with us, too. Thank you. Yeah. Me, too. <laughs> Good to have you with us, too, Doctor. Yeah, thank you so okay. much for having me. Dr. C. Sean Kawaja, a vascular neurologist at Cleveland Clinic, and Ernest Williams, the second, a stroke survivor. Yes. I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back in just a moment. Triple M time, morning exchange segment with Marsha Maccabee. Three M's in a row there. Morning oh, wow. exchange, Marsha Maccabee. I like that mm -hmm. new plug. Mm -hmm. Good. That's what, that's what <laughs> hey, Marsha of the Urban League, what are you Hi. thinking about today? Oh, Leon, so much. Um, it, it's just been uh, an incredible you know, month during the month of March. A lot of things going on. We're, we're working with the Opportunity Corridor. We are working with helping to get individuals into the construction trades. Um, I'm just really so encouraged and excited because I'm seeing um, there's such a need to connect individuals who don't really know the pathways the, uh, of uh, employment that are available today. Mm -hmm. They just don't know what it takes to get there. And through our solid opportunities for advancement and retention, our SOAR training class yeah. that we have at the Urban League, yeah. Yeah. we are really helping individuals to get themselves focused, get themselves confident about going on to a next step in employment and additional training and so forth. And so I'm just really, I'm seeing that this SOAR training is going to be a real plus for this city to help disconnected individuals get connected to real employment opportunities. And SOAR, S-O-A-R, yes. which means? Solid opportunities for advancement and retention. So that's what it's all about. It says Absolutely. what it's all about. And yes. you, you need the applicants in this program who can exactly. move on to jobs to be yes. bold, as Dolores Presley said at the top yes. of this broadcast. Absolutely. They must be bold with their lives. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and the SOAR gives them that, that opportunity to try and and learn how to do that in a safe environment. They all have an elevator speech when they come out of the SOAR class. Is that right? They absolutely Get do. on the elevator at the ground floor and let's go to the penthouse. <laughs> absolutely. In life. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you for what you do of the Urban League. Thank you. Thank goodness you're in town. Thank and the you. Urban League is here, too. <laughs> and thank goodness for TV5. <laughs> That's going to do it for us. Take care. A weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and New News Channel 5.